Hello, welcome to the Blessing Report with the Meat Not Milk podcast. And in today's episode, we are talking about, yo, Christians should not be sexy. And I already know y'all are going to comment a response before we even get into it. So I'm just going to get right into the material. Let's go. Hey, thanks for checking out the Meat Not Milk um, podcast and the Blessing Report YouTube with our Agape segment um, talking about relationships. And I just want to talk about the point of Christians aren't supposed to be sexy. I legitimately just want to start with a simple um, definition from Webster. What is being sexy, right? So sexy is evoking sexual um, being sexually suggestive or sexually stimulating or also erotic all right so this is what i want to say in short before everybody get all the stuff in a huff um you can be attractive you can be beautiful you can be handsome you could be cute you could be gorgeous you can be radiant or whatever else but christian's trying to be sexy right there to evoke sex a sexual response um, it's just blatant lust and it's just blatant carnality and that's just sin, right? And the main people asking, wait, um, I should be sexy for my husband or for my wife, right? Are single Christians. So that's just really disingenuous because you don't have a wife or husband to be sexy for. So shut up. <laughs> and so um, this is why... Um, think is the thing right that the church always um, talks about hey don't be a stumbling block when it comes to um, women they never talk about men so the church and Christianity never talks about male modesty or male purity but it's always forced on women to um, be like the holders of our abstinence or celibate um, journeys and that's definitely going to be an episode um, in the future male purity and male um, modesty not be talking um, talked about in the church so definitely turn on your bell notification subscribe to the youtube in the podcast um, but i just think it's weird that we want to use all these carnal means to determine our Christianity that don't come from scripture, the Bible, um, but are just vanity, right? And I think it's weird that Christians never, I mean, I don't even want to say never, I want to say always, want to talk about how tight clothes and revealing outfits can be a stumbling block for men. But don't talk about how shirtless pictures and tight pants revealing everything isn't a stumbling block for women. And so at the root and heart of both of these problems are Christians attempting to be worldly, carnal, in an attempt to be sexy by the cultures and the world standards. And so I just have like two scriptures I wanna go off of, of like, yo, this should be our heart postures towards one another because we should steward one another very well uh, in our singleness, courtship, dating, engagement, and even when it comes to marriages. And it comes from Romans 14 and then 1 Corinthians 10, both talking about um, eating laws. But I think it's a great posture about, yo, what should I be doing um, when it comes to my heart posture in all of my activities? And Romans 14, 23 says, but whosoever has doubt is condemned if they eat because their eating is not from faith. And everything that does not come from faith is sin. So that's um, Romans 14, but 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says, so whatever, so um, whether you eat or drink or whether you do, do all things to the glory of God. So y'all, I'm just gonna talk from a man perspective of what um, I'm doing. 
Yo, or not even just a man perspective, I wanna talk about this generation when it comes to young people and millennials. We are creating a generation full of narcissists that we are just doing anything that is self-serving, self-pleasing. And we um, do things for likes, we do things for comments, we do things for a response. And people are like, oh, I don't um, post um, pictures, blah, 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 for people, I do it for myself, you're lying. I've seen people, uh, like if you were really doing things for yourself, you wouldn't care about having a bad picture. Why is your phone full of pictures of trying to get a good picture. And why if you don't get enough um, comments or enough likes, um, you take a picture down. So right there, you're doing things um, for a response. And right there in the two scriptures, you're supposed to do things in faith, but also you're supposed to do things for the glory of God. And I know um, some people have been following me long enough where they know this, like, yo, if you ever see me <laughs> posting a um, shirtless picture yo I'm doing it for likes yo because just the way like I dress or I think a lot of people dress you, you dress well right you dress smooth handsome where just like a man perspective but when um, you're dressed up and you're looking nice you're also covered you're also modest right and so if I just myself um, am ever um, like shirtless, I'm just like showing off like, yo, I got six pack. Like I think that's one thing uh, people would never know. Um, just the way like I carry myself, um, just personally, I, I'm typically like phys physically fit, right? But I know like what the scriptures say about like, yo, don't evoke lust in one another and don't be a stumbling block to one another. So I think it's weird that uh, we only harp on women not being a stumbling block when men can clearly be a stumbling block with muscles and a six pack. And I think it's a false dichotomy when people are like, oh, a beard can be a um, stumbling block. That can evoke lust. But the, in one instance, you are doing things out of vainglory. In another instance, um, something's being evoked out of uh, immature and underdeveloped um, self-control and so like what those scriptures just say is like yo how does God get glory out of me showing off my body so women can get a response right and um, how am I doing this in faith anything I do not do in faith is to <laughs> equivalent of sin and um, another verse they want to use to justify vanity which is a clear sin in the Bible um, is like yo live by your own convictions but I think there are certain things that we refuse be to become convicted about because we want to do whatever we want to do and that's just selfish and so do I think me posting a shirtless picture is sin Nah, not particularly, but am I mindful enough about the walk of believers or even my friends um, where I know this is not a sin, but I'm going to go out my way, inconvenience myself so that their walks can be solid. I'm going to do that. And I do the same thing with drinking. Drinking is not a sin, but I don't drink because I don't like the taste of alcohol, but also I'm going to not drink to not be a stumbling block, inconvenience myself. And that's what um, a verse in Galatians says. It says that you need to count others more high than yourself. And so when you take the lower position, we um, are able to fellowship with one another and do it one another better because we're not doing things in vanity, self-service, and that's what social media is making us. Uh, just a generation of people trying to get identity, self-worth, in doing things that only uh, um, help us and not other people. And anything that's inconvenient to our pleasure and our convenience, we're not gonna do. But the Bible teaches us to do the exact opposite. And so we just need to come out and say it. Christianity and the church has been taking their cues 
from the world and from culture for far too long now and we refuse to admit that there is a ungodly infatuation with popularity and so anything that the world is doing or they don't see the harm in Christians just take it on it's just the dumbest thing ever because I'm just going to give the example um, when it comes to modesty when it comes to the brain right um, if we're talking about underwear lingerie and bikinis they all have the same type of surface level covering when it comes to fabric so me as a man having working eyes in a brain. You're gonna tell me when I see a bikini um, that has the same amount of fabric as underwear and lingerie, you're telling my brain and my primal instinct, hey, don't get aroused by that. Um, that's a bikini, that's um, swimwear. But when I'm married and my wife is wearing lingerie that covers just as much, or sometimes bikinis cover less. It's like, yo, that should turn you on. Do you know how dumb that sounds? Do you know? <laughs> we just sound crazy. And so I think that um, just what the body of Christ, um, the Bible, and what Jesus is really exposing is that um, many people are one trick ponies. And um, the fact that you have nothing else to offer or rely on besides um, like your looks and sexuality um, is really a detriment um, to you as a holistic being that has way more um, personality and worth than just looking good because that's just genetics, that's just biology. Like truly I believe that our hearts and even our underdeveloped personalities and in inaccuracies where it's like, yo, you got some insecurities about not being able to attract a partner in the same manner because you have not developed um, in other areas like um, maybe intelligence, maybe um, humor, maybe um, uh, money's a bad example. <laughs> but um, somewhere else, maybe integrity, um, where your value can move from the surface level, instinctual, primal stuff like sex and being sexy to more intrinsic value like your character or maybe you're just fun and you're good at communication or um, a good talker because that's what you find. You find someone that's fine and then they can't talk because their whole life they have been given everything. So you just have underdeveloped personalities all over the place. So yeah, you're like the star athlete um, in school, but um, you were pulling them back then, but now that doesn't work in the body of Christ, right? And yeah, you used to have all of these guys asking for your numbers and being lined up, but your body and your looks can't stand up against the kingdom of God because it doesn't, just doesn't work here. And so um, we just need to come to terms with the fact that you simply will not get the same type of attention when you are in Christ. And now this is the thing I'm going to say. Um, I did not say you're not going to get as much attention in Christ because I think that we uh, want to be like the somehow we have determined as Christianity is like the little brother or the off brand to the world as if we are lesser. We're not lesser. Um, Jesus said he has come to give us life and life more abundantly. We are just as good or better um, than the world. But you're not going to get the same type of attention because the attention you were getting in the world slick was rooted in lust. That is sensualism. That is of the devil. That is of the flesh. That is a very primal and doesn't take a lot of brain power. But you know what attracts people in the body of Christ um, will be like um, beauty. It will be um, being radiant, being gorgeous, a um, character, service, um, personality. Um, even um, talents, maybe you've been fine your whole life and you don't have no talents or hobbies. Maybe Jesus is trying to give you more than that one trick. And, um, 
And that's the thing about Jesus. He's going to give you way more things to offer than um, your body and your looks. And that's the thing when um, you're equating your worth to such primal instinctual um, habits is that, yo, what you can offer, anybody can offer. And so if you're fine or um, you got abs or muscles or like breasts or a butt, there's going to be a person with bigger muscles. There's going to be people with a better beard. There's going to be women with a better body. And when you get older and you're married, there's going to be people with a younger body. And so um, if your marriage or even your relationship is relying on such primal things, then it's very shallow. It's very surface level. But in Christ, you have way more to offer. And so I just wanted to point out just um, something of like what you are wanting for um, holistically and long term your actions are actually counterintuitive to that. So I wanna know how counterintuitive it is to use primal means to attract a partner, but be upset when they are shallow. <laughs> because you're simply, so you are simply um, going off of sexual instinct and trying um, to be sexy because again, um, that's what the definition um, of sexy was to evoke a sexual response or stimulant. And um, sex is like one of the lowest registers in the brain when it comes to the human psyche. <laughs> and so I think the like three primal, uh, like instinctual like needs of a human is uh, food, shelter, and clothing. And right after that is like love and sex right and so if you're evoking a sexual response trying to be um, um sexy but demanding a higher register of thinking um then that is not conducive to your um cognition of thinking because you are asking for to two different responses in two different parts of the brain uh, from the same human being. So it's like, yo, I'm attracting you with my body, but then I want you to respect me. It's like, no, if I'm showing my body jump all up on the internet, and then I'm like, whoa, why are you going after my body? I'm the idiot. I I'm the one that is double-minded and I should expect nothing of God, just like um, the scripture in James tells us. And so if we are using primal nature, just like unevolved, like cave people, <laughs> moving off of lust and instinctual um, appetite, but then you're demanding for people to think, we're just working backwards and we're working actively against things that we actually want. But I wanna give some big game when it comes um, to women. And know this, attention is not an investment. There are a lot of women um, in the world that are using um, sexual tactics, um, basically like to get a man or yeah, just to get a partner or whatever. But note, they are evoking lust and what they are getting is attention they are not getting investment so even if i was um talking like really cardinally um uh, with like my friends or whoever as men yo on the wrong day that stuff may work on me like legitimately but what we're saying as men is like yo um she got a crazy body I'll smash, I'll hit, I'll sleep with her, but you're not like, yo, I'll make her uh, my wife. And the only difference between um, the two, between someone that gets um, attention and a person that gets investment is all about character and class. And so I know a lot of people um, like to joke on her, but I think a few people that you can like see the um, difference in like attention and investment would be like um, Aisha Curry, right? Or um, Michelle Obama. Uh, if you are to look at these women, they are both 
evoking a certain a level of attraction like they are both like attractive women but in terms of like how you characterize them they're always in terms of a higher standard when it comes to men um, respecting them so they are always called gorgeous radiant or beautiful uh, maybe as low as cute or fine right but I don't really hear um, people um, calling them sexy um, it may be because they're both married women but I do think they both carry themselves by a standard that demand respect. And likewise, just as a man, bro, we have certain people in our friend groups where we look at them as like women of God and we say to one another and we're like, yo, I need to step my game up or get my life right before I even approach her. But if you're talking about people that just get attention, um, you're talking about a Cardi B, a Megan um, Stallion, a Beyonce, um, a um, Nicki Minaj. All these people are evoking lust. And yo, but what they're not evoking is respect. They're not demanding it. And I know just as people were saying like, hey, um, just as a human being, you need to respect me. But I think it's so counterintuitive for you as a person to use carnal means and shallow means but want me to operate at a higher frequency not just as a man as women too because women um some men are just offering you sex too so i think it would be dumb of them to be like oh my gosh <laughs> respect me for more than just my body it's like no you're acting against what you're demanding and so i don't think that um, respect is innate. I do think it's earned. I think that you can act in a manner where you could be disrespected. Like, just at if someone's like rude to you, I know the Bible doesn't say this, but if someone is rude to you um, at a restaurant, and, and I'm, I'm a bad waiter, and you start cussing me out, and then I say, hey, you should respect me. I'm a human. No! Your behavior evoked a response that was counterintuitive to respect. So I think it's weird that we do this in any scenario other than um, appearance. And this is the thing, um, it says even, even in Proverbs, it's like, yo, um, if you talk crazy, <laughs> this is Message Bible, it's, but it says like, yo, if you talk crazy, expect to get punched in the face. And so, even the Bible says like, yo, you can do things that can go against respect. And it's like, yo, if my action or behavior um, does that, that it is what it is. Um, Dave Chappelle has one of the funniest, he's very carnal. I don't recommend listening to him, but he has a funny joke about um, dressing a tire. And uh, basically he says like women, um, say hey just because i'm dressed promiscuous doesn't mean that you should treat me as promiscuous but then uh he says you know how dumb that sounds that's like me <laughs> dressed as a police officer and someone comes running up to me saying oh my gosh officer i'm so glad that you're here they just robbed me and then my response is whoa, 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 whoa. Just because I am dressed like a police officer doesn't mean you should treat me like a police officer. Do you see how dumb that sounds? And so um, I think that we um, need to come to terms that, hey, so our self-worth cannot be tied in like being sexy and evoking lust or our looks or our appearance, but how much the Bible says our identity is in Christ. It says acknowledge every good thing that's in you in Christ Jesus, right? And then we just need to point out like how many scriptures are like, yo, appearance is not everything. And so if we um, work on who we are as people, um, I think that we will just come in terms of us being beautiful inside and out. And just because I'm now in Christ and I'm getting less looks. I'm getting less um, 
attention doesn't mean that I'm not still worthy of investment. I shouldn't, my self-esteem shouldn't lessen um, just because people aren't asking for my number. Um, I'm not going out as many dates because yo, why do you need quantity when you have quality? And that's what Christ is offering. <laughs> and so I just want like a few scriptures that we can legitimately go off of, live off of, to encourage us how to walk in godliness and stuff, right? So um, these scriptures are specifically for young people because I really think this is a young people um, thing, or even like maybe some older people um, that are just um, single. And so um, the first one comes from 1 Timothy 2, verses 8 through 10. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting, in like manner also that women adore themselves in modest apparel, um, with um, shamefacedness and sobriety, not um, broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which become this woman professing godliness with good works. So the Bible, especially in James, is like, yo, be rich in good works, be rich in godliness. And um, these are things we should strive for. And like men, we also need the same standard of purity and modesty uh, for ourselves. And again, we have even more scriptures when it comes to um, Titus 2. And it says, but speak thou the things which um, become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience, that the aged women likewise, that they be um, in behavior as become holiness, not false accusers, not given um, too much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their husbands, that the word of God be not ashamed. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded. In all things, show thyself um, a pattern of good works in doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, um, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to save of you. So yo, the that verse is like, yo, live above reproach. And what that means is like, yo, I live um, such a life where I can't be scrutinized uh, because I am a minister of the gospel. I'm an ambassador of Christ and you are likewise. And so we can't live by the world standards or carnal means um, where it's just like, man, we have to look different. We have to be different. So if we both look the same, you're saved. Uh, well, yeah, you're saved and I'm not saved. I don't see why I need Jesus or whatever. Uh, I don't see why I need to respect you. I don't see why I need your God. And so I think that's why um, Christians are not as effective in evangelism, but especially in discipleship, because we blend in just like the world. And so the last one I wanna go off of, um, great chapter on godly womanhood, Proverbs 31. I know it's overdone, but I just wanna quote verse 30. Favor is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. So um, simply being sexy and invoking a sexual response is not, yo, someone like what we want to be known for. It's nothing of longevity, um, legacy or whatever, because we're gonna get old one day legitimately. And so if all we can offer is what something someone else has, it's like, yo, you could be easily replaced. But um, things in like a prayer life, godliness, holiness, righteousness, integrity, those things are widespread. Um, having good doctrine, being intelligent, bro, you can look better than me, but if we try to get into this word right now, that's what I'm saying. You have so much more to offer in Christ Jesus. But yo, you know me, I ain't, <laughs> ain't close-minded. So yo, 
If you um, agree for, with me, like Christian shouldn't be sexy, we could be fine, attractive, gorgeous, beautiful, cute, handsome. <laughs> Um, let me hear from you. But if you're like, nah, Winston, you're full of it. Um, comment below. Uh, I want to hear from you. I ain't afraid of no public discord, but I want uh, scriptures in context because either we're going to live this thing out biblically and by the word of God or opinions don't matter here. And so it's like, yo, nah, you should be sexy as a Christian. <sighs> I'm not saying you should be ugly, cause Christians are fine, look at me. <coughs> but still, that stuff doesn't matter. Just like Jesus, the Bible says Jesus was uncombly, which just means unattractive, because the glory of God shines through. So what's shining through you? But yo, thank you for watching um, the Blessed Friend Report with the Meat Not Milk podcast with our relationship segment, agape make sure to check in um, next week on thursday for another um, agape segment uh, make sure to subscribe um, to the youtube channel the podcast on spotify um, itunes apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to this audio and um, make sure to turn on your bell notification so you don't miss an episode thanks for checking in to uh, episode four check in again next week and make sure if you just want to support the podcast and you believe in us share the video but also you can um give a donation monetarily by joining the patreon so yo i love you uh love to hear from you and we'll see you next week <laughs>